Alright guys, I'm currently in Cappadocia, Turkey, running a workshop, so I'm coming at you again in the form of voiceover. But this month, we see the curtains closing on Milky Way core season, we see the return of my favourite constellation, Orion. The northern lights are truly taking over the high latitudes in the northern hemisphere, and we also see a return of the zodiacal light. But before we dive into all of that, a quick message from the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 29,000 classes in design, business, and all things photography and video. If you're looking to brush up on your landscape astrophotography, then you should check out this course by Ian Norman, the guy behind LonelySpec.com. He covers all the basics you need to know to capture and edit amazing nightscape images that include things like the Milky Way. There's also another course run by adventure photographer and Instagram legend Chris Burkhard. He teaches you outdoor photography from sunset to sunrise and even capturing wonderful images in the nighttime that exists between. Skillshare is super affordable and annual subscription costs just seven pounds a month and that gives you access to all of the courses and you can try as many as you like but if you use the link in the video description below you can get two months free of Skillshare premium so you can try out as many classes as you like so follow that link in the description below and you can get two months free of Skillshare premium Okay guys, for those of you that are new here, the information in these videos is primarily for Northern Hemisphere based observers, but where there are special events occurring in the Southern Hemisphere, they will also be mentioned as well. That said, things like full moon dates and any conjunctions between the planets and the moon are the same for everyone worldwide. As we head into autumn, we see the curtains closing on Milky Way core season. So as twilight finishes, you can find the Milky Way core in the south southwest. But as the night goes on, the Milky Way core will begin to set towards the west. Even with the core gone, there's still plenty of Milky Way goodness to be had. You now have a chance to photograph some west facing compositions. And you can include regions like the Great Rift and the Cygnus region, one of my favourite regions of the Milky Way as well. So even with the so-called Milky Way core season coming to an end, it doesn't mean that there's no Milky Way in in the sky we're just saying goodbye to the core for six months now with the milky way core setting we see the return of orion orion and the constellation scorpius are opposite each other in the night sky so as scorpius sets in the west we see orion rising in the east so for those of you who are early risers or for those of you who are out all night until sunrise keep an eye out in the east as you'll see orion returning as the nights are now getting longer darkness is returning to the high northern latitudes and the northern lights will illuminate the night Night sky once again. They've already been captured from the UK in August by none other than Christopher Cogan. Uh, you can see this image here, an awesome display at the end of August. If you're new to Aurora Chasing, I highly recommend checking the website spaceweather.com because if there's any inbound activity or any possible activity in the coming days, they'll make an announcement on the homepage in very easy to understand language. Then there are apps that can help you stay alert. Apps like Aurora Watch UK, which is pretty live and also so the Glendale Sky Aurora app. This is a really, really useful resource for Aurora chasers, so definitely check that out. But as we head into autumn, there's another opportunity for those of you at mid to high northern latitudes, and that is the triangular diffused glow of the zodiacal light. Those of you who live close to the equator can see the zodiacal light all year round, but those of you at higher latitudes can only catch it when the ecliptic, the path of the sun, is steep against the horizon. The zodiacal light is a diffused glow caused by dust and particles within the plane of the planets reflecting sunlight back into the night sky. It's technically a form of light pollution but it does offer an interesting opportunity for some different photographs especially as everyone has probably spent the past few months honing in on the Milky Way core. During autumn the zodiacal light is visible in the east just before dawn so it's one for you early risers or for those of you like me who stay out all night until sunrise. You'll find it extending from the horizon in the direction that the sun is about to rise and it is a very faint light so you want to make sure there's no light pollution in that direction and photographing it you'd use the same settings as you would for the Milky Way for example. As for conjunctions this month, there's nothing that really excites me, but on the 5th of September, Jupiter can be found just to the left of the moon, and then on the 8th, it's Saturn's turn to dance with the moon in the night sky. That's pretty much all I've got for you this month. I'm sorry it's such a quick video, guys. I've had to make this video in quite a rush, as I'm really busy right now. If there's anything I've missed, please get in the comments below, and I'll pin your comment to make sure that everybody sees it. 
But now let's take a look at the hashtag Wittens, which now has over 5,000 posts. For those of you that are new here, the hashtag Wittens, what's in the night sky. I set a subject every month and ask you guys to tag your photos and I feature my three favorite photos on this YouTube video and on my Instagram. Last month I asked you guys to tag your photos of the Perseids meteor shower. We didn't get that many entries, but I'm not surprised given that the moon phase was really not favorable for the Perseids this year. That said, we've still got three favorites and the first is this one from Andrew who managed to capture his first meteor shower and photograph a few of them from Scotland pretty awesome first attempt at a meteor shower uh, we also had this image from Martin who captured quite a large colorful person here just as the moon was setting as well so that must have been quite a sight but easily my favorite this month is from Motti with this monster of a Perseid fireball lighting up the skies above the three Golgotha crosses in Germany. The green color arises from the high concentration of magnesium in the meteor and I love this image. There's also a nice chunk of the Milky Way in there including the Great Rift and the Cygnus region, areas of the Milky Way that you should be focusing now on the next couple of months and there's also some really nice color there in the North American Nebula too. So great job Molly. There's a pretty damn awesome shot this month there's nothing really distinct going on so i'm just gonna let it be a free-for-all no restrictions no subjects just tag your best astro shots and that's it guys i have a vlog from chile coming very soon i've been quite quiet this month i've been quite busy taking a bit of downtime but i've got one more vlog from chile where i'll be announcing an exciting giveaway from ben Rowe. so stay tuned for that and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon i wish you good luck and clear skies